Hello everyone, welcome back to Java Charter. I am excited to bring you a new video today titled Emphasis L1 Java FS Delete. In this video, we will be discussing the interview questions and answers related to a lead position for Java full stack development at Emphasis. I have organized the answers in a short format so you can quickly grasp the key points. Before we dive in, let me mention that this is a part 1 of the interview series. I have split the content into two parts to keep the videos shorter and more convenient for you. Don't worry, you will find the link to a part 2 in the description below once it is available. I encourage you to watch the entire video and then explore the topics further on your own to gain a deeper understanding. And remember friends, if you have any questions or need further clarification, Feel free to leave a comment and I will be happy to help you. Alright, enough of the introduction. Let's dive right into our interview questions for L1 Java FFD lead position at Emphasis. So without further ado, let's get started. So as everyone asked, the first question was brief about yourself. As someone with many years of experience in Java should have developed a strong foundation in Java programming and have gained expertise in various aspects of the language and its ecosystem. Throughout your career, you might have worked on a wide range of projects from small applications to large-scale enterprise solutions. So please answer uh, this question according to your experience. The second question which interview asks is what are the enums in Java? So as we no, enums are a special data type used to declare a fixed set of constants which define using enum keyword. In Java, enumeration is a special data type which allows you to define a set of named constants representing a fixed values. Uh, so if you can see the example on the screen, I have declared enum of programming which contains a set of constant value like Java, C, Ruby and JavaScript. The another questions which interview ask what are the differences between an iterator and list iterator in Java. So in Java both iterator and list iterator are interfaces that allows you to traverse through elements in a collection. However, there are some key differences between them. So in iterator it helps to traverse through a map, list and set. Elements can't be added since it would throw concurrent modification exception. Some of the methods of iterator are next, remove and has next. In the list is iterator, it helps traverse through a list only. It can't traverse through a map and set. Some of the methods of list iterator are next index, previous index and previous and next. Then another question which interviewer asks is what are the differences between array list and linked list. So in array list is a better for storing and accessing data. The syntax of array list is look like array list and the object of array list equal to new array list. When you should use array list? So insertion and deletion approaches are slow in array list as rearrangement is required. If I talk about list, list iterator, list iterator, uh, sorry here is a mistake, it's a link list. So link list is a better for manipulating data. Syntax looks like link list, uh, object of uh, link list equal to new link list. Link list is much faster in terms of insertion and deletion operations. So you can explore uh, array list and link list by your own. These are some basic points uh, to help you to understand. The another questions which interviewer ask is what are the differences between hash map, synchronized hash map and concurrent hash map. So hash map, synchronized hash map and concurrent hash map are the three different implementation of map interface in Java. So concurrent hash map is a thread set without synchronizing wall map. There is no locking at the object level and it uses multiple multitude of locks. Synchronized hash map uh, is synchronization at object level. Every read write operation needs to acquire a lock. This essentially gives access to only one thread to entire map and blocks all the other threads. Whereas hash map is a non-synchronized and non-thread set, the synchronized hash map is less scalable than concurrent hash map. In summary, if you need a basic map and are working in a single threaded environment, you can use a hash map. If you require thread safety and want to use a synchronized map, you can consider a synchronized hash map. But be aware of the potential performance impact. For high concurrency scenarios, while multiple threads need to access the map concurrently, 
concurrent hash map is the recommended choice due to the its efficiency concurrent handling now another uh, basic question which most company ask is what is internal working of hash map in java in my previous videos also i have included this question so uh, the main data structure internally used by hash map are array and linked list the internal working of hash map in java involves how it stores and retrieves the key value pairs and handle the collision so i would uh, suggest you guys to explore the answer of this question by your own to understand it better the next question is what is association composition and aggregation in java so association is a very important concept in an object oriented programming language it establishes the relationship between two separate classes association can be of one to one one to many and many to one and many to many there are two types of association composition and aggregation composition represents a part of relationship code reusability is not possible whereas aggregation is a has a relationship where code reusability is a possible to understand it better i would suggest you guys to go through a example now uh, the another question which interviewer asked uh, was a output question so he asked what would be the output of following program so here if you can see string s1 equal to java charter string s2 equal to new string java charter here there is a slight mistake in the syntax please ignore it string s3 equal to java charter and there are two sysout statements which s1 equal s3 and s1 equals s2 so output of this program is true true to understand it better let me tell you guys when uh, we declare string s1 equal to java charter it creates a string literal java charter and assign it to a variable s1 when a string literal is created java ensures that it is added uh, to a string pool if there is already a string with the same value in the pool it will reuse and the new object will not be created please remember in the second line string s2 equal to new string java charter this creates a new string object using the new keyword which is a distinct from the string pool even uh, though the content of this new string object is the same as java charter it is separate object in the memory now string s3 equal to java charter this is similar to s1 it creates another reference to s3 which points to the same string literals java charter in the string pool now another question so which interviewer ask is what will be the output of following program so here you can see on the screen the output is inside the try block the reason is there is a system dot exit at line number 8 so it will print only the first sysout statement and that wraps up part 1 of interview series for the emphasis l1 java fsd lead position i hope you found the information helpful and informative if you enjoyed this video don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to java charter for more valuable content but wait we are not done yet there is more to cover in part 2 of this series we will be we will be delivering uh, the part 2 uh, very soon and so make you uh, make sure you hit the notification bell so you will first to know when part 2 is live Uh, stay tuned for even more valuable insights and tips to help you succeed in your Java full stack development career. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you see you in the part two. Happy coding!